Hi, and welcome to A Punk With Toys. My name is Lawrence, and today we're gonna take a look at the Skeletron Gray Wolf. Now, this is the four inch figure, 1 18th scale. And yes, it is the same uh, as the Wolf Trooper, but we'll be doing a separate review on that one. So this one here is the Gary Goggles uh, figure. And as you can see here, he's silver. Rather than have a mask, it actually has the face sculpt all the Gary goggles. If I had more information on Gary, I would definitely give it to you, but here we go. Uh, the mask, we have the gun, and there definitely is something in the back that glows in the dark. Um, you have the logo, and if you watch my review on the other one, I had the feels of the vintage O-ring G.I. Joe's. So this one you don't get. This is a modern four inch figure. We're gonna take a look. Uh, I hope it's absolutely wonderful. You got a wonderful card here. They do have the plastic insert that keeps him where he's supposed to be. And on the back, you have your cross cell, the row of the uh, Robo Skull Mark II and the different figures. Now, you look at this one and then you look at this, you can tell there's a huge difference. So this is the O-ring and they give you the file cards. This was meant to feel more like the Action Force, the Palatoy type stuff, I believe, in G.I. Joe different things like that. But with this here, they give you a more modern feel where it's more of a digital readout because obviously this is a new age. At least this is how I how I read it. So here's your cross all of these. And then rather have your regular file card, it's more like it's pointing it out as a digital readout. So I really do like it and it tells you it's the Gray Wolf spelled G-R, I'm sorry, G-Y-R-E. Uh, it's Gary Goggles and a birthplace chicago illinois and gives you a little story about him so anyway um let's just get into this uh, i can't wait to get this open we're going to compare them to the last four inch figures from hasbro for gi joe i have uh, a joy toy up there but i also have the modern his tanks they were the walmart exclusives and we're going to see if these guys will actually fit in here and i will explain to you why i grabbed those his tanks rather than the original O-ring one. So anyway, let's go take a look at this. But before we do, if you like this content, if you like stuff like this, and I will be doing a lot of RoboSkull, yeah, a lot of RoboSkull or Skeletron stuff. I always get them too mixed up. Um, I'm going to read a lot of stuff. So if you enjoy this content, take a second, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I drop a video like this. Now, let's get to this. All right, so we got the figure out of the package and let's take a look at everything that it comes with. And it looks like it comes with two stands. So here you can see the RoboSkull logo. It's actually etched on the backside. But you have your pegs here now. Three, three pegs in this, in this triangular. It's just kind of weird for a stand, but hey, if it works, it works. And then we have this one here that looks like it's some sort of portal. Uh, and it looks like they got some glitter that was put in, you know, put into it. And it doesn't look like it's all just one color. Maybe that's just how it was. Uh, some's closer to the, the top and to the bottom when it was put in. But it looks like it's a portal. If you watch the other video, you already know what this actually does. Take a look at his backpack. So you get a little bit of paint app here. Looks like what is an exhaust for uh, the jet pack small little peg there and then we have these claws that pop out and will go around uh, obviously his wrists this is nice and shiny i really do like the way that it looks let's get this thing back out here and what we actually have here is two hexagon i think they're hexagons right that almost look like something would plug into it. So that's very interesting to wonder if that's supposed to plug into something down the road. But here we go. This looks really nice. We have the alternate head. And this is translucent. And again, I think we already know what this is going to do. No paint apps on it. But we'll take a look at that a little bit after. We got the grit. Ah, hold on. Get it. I didn't go too far. Whew, we're back. <laughs> uh, 
we got the helmet and I think it looks really nice here uh, again it has what looks like kind of like a heads up display on the eyes some nice paint apps to it I don't see anything that's messed up on it so that is a total I don't want to say plus because I think this is how most toys should come and then you have his handgun his hand laser which I think looks really nice uh, again very futuristic almost looks like road roadblocks big cannon uh, from the classified the first one that everyone hated but this is actually cool because it is sci-fi now quickly I want to go grab something um, but if you're still here uh, I hope you're still there Take a second and please subscribe and like. Uh, it does help out the channel and everything. I actually wanted to grab this figure, even though we'll be comparing him in the next one. What I like about what they did here, and I'm not talking about the figure, is that they have really separated the two O-ring and the four-inch figures, although I have no problem mixing and matching. There are a lot of people that will not mix and match four-inch and 3.75. I don't have a problem with it. It's all 118 scale, and I think it all works pretty well together. All right, so let's take a look at this here. And first off, look at that head sculpt. It looks really nice. You got the goggles, and they are molded on there, so can't can't take them off. It has what the same look as the mask. You have the beard that looks really nice, eyes. Here we have the logo on the chest here. It's all silver. One little dot of red paint, which is fine. And we got some red over here. The articulation on it. You're going to get your T-pose. Arm swivels. Let's see here. And I'm not heating anything up right now. So that's pretty good. Everything feels really smooth. You get your wrist swivel. You get your Jean-Claude Van Damme. Double, uh, double knee joints, along with the thigh swivel. You get your ankle rockers. So everything here looks really nice. Now, they talked about an elbow tilt, I believe. And I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, I think I might have to... You might have to do a little bit of uh, looking to figure out what that actually is. Yeah, I'm not sure what this elbow tilt that they talked about is. Uh, if maybe the peg system is a little different. But I'm not really sure what makes this different than compared to the G.I. Joe that's back there. So his waist does swivel back and forth. But getting back to the design, really sweet looking design. Clearly it is futuristic. They're in space. I have no problem with it. You have uh, the side piece here for what his gun actually pegs onto. Which look at that. That looks absolutely awesome. You can take his backpack and we can plug it right on in and his claws are on it. And then here we have the mask. And it just seamlessly just falls right on there it looks absolutely sharp you can look back and forth can't really look up and down where i don't think the figure can either so what we're going to do here is we're going to pop this off Ooh, that head popped off really nice and easy and we're going to pop on this translucent head that goes on pretty sweet all right, then we got the pistol. Let's see how well the pistol actually goes in his hand. Now you can see he's got a trigger finger. I'm gonna pry it open just a slight bit here. And looking at the gun, now he has a trigger finger, but he really doesn't need one, not for this gun here. It's actually a really tight fit because there's no trigger for it. But it will work if you want to use, let's say, one of the old, one of the old, they're not even old, the four-inch G.I. Joe stuff. If you're wondering why it sounds like I'm struggling, so I'm bending over to get this, <laughs> to get this gun. 
Um, but looking at this, I'm assuming the gun is supposed to go on like this. Not a big fan of how that goes. I mean, it's not supposed to go this way. I don't know. This, I guess, we'll have to play with a little bit. You can kind of see what the trigger is. But all in all, everything looks extremely nice. We are going to plug this bad boy onto here. Just like that. Let's take his claws off. Throw on his jet pack here. Look how that looks. And then these will just clamp right on here. So if you like modern four, four inch figures, I think you're really gonna like this. They seem to fit pretty smoothly. Uh, there's no doubt about that. So look at that. How well does he stand? Well, they would stand him that easily. So I can't complain too much. Uh, I'm a, not a fan of stands. Anyone that watches the channel knows my feelings on stands. But that is for 6-inch figures. When it comes to 3.75, 4-inch figures, it's fully understandable. They have a much smaller footprint. O-ring figures, they really don't maneuver as easily. So... I can see why people do it or use them. The Joy Toy here, he does have more accessories. Uh, he has more articulation when it comes to a lot of the stuff. Different type of line. Uh, this is like a $21 figure. This is $27 online. But this has more of a story. This is just an army builder. Most of the Joy Toys, I believe, are anywhere from $25 to $30. Now, here are the, the, the modern... The last iteration of the Joes, you can see they're about the same height, which looks really nice. I would say they all have fairly, pretty much the exact same articulation. Again, these figures, they just don't stand all that well. <laughs> uh, especially when anything is, is a little bit heavier on the backpack or something like that. So, But you're going to get the exact same articulation. You're going to get probably more of a T-pose on this figure. Just because there's nothing obstructing it. But this here is very pliable. So if you really wanted to, you could probably pop this off. Actually looking at it, right there I can tell that I can pop this off if need be. So the reason why I brought up the His Tank here. And these are the Walmart exclusive His Tanks, right? So the reason for this is... The four inch figures are a different size, and I don't mean just that quarter of an inch. Their legs are completely different. So, if you don't know this, when it comes to like this his tank here, being that this is the old one, this is actually set further back. It is not the exact same mold as an O-ring. The, uh, the four inch figures will not fit in an O-ring one properly. You can cram them in there and you can work this canopy down, but they will not sit in there properly. So I made sure to bring up the Walmart ones and let's see if we can fit them in here. And unfortunately, okay, all right, all right so it actually did, it did work. I didn't think that was going to fit with the, with the gun there, but popping this thing down here. sure if that canopy is going to close all the way hopefully it will let's find out here that gun may just cause a couple issues man that thing looks like it he should fit in there pretty good right it's not just me I mean, that looks like it fits look at that Whew. and i think the blue which <laughs> Maybe you can still find one at Ollie's, but man, these things were at Ollie's for like 10 bucks. And if you wanted to army build them, 10 or 15 bucks, I forget what it was. You had your options right there. This looks absolutely amazing with him. Uh, I think the, <laughs> when I get the red wolf out, oh man, or the wolf trooper, which is red. So this fits really nicely, really sharp as you can see so no complaints there you can see he does fit in a his tank 
Again, if you're trying to use the O-ring one from the uh, 80s, it is not going to work, unfortunately, for everyone. All right, so let's see how the stand actually fits him. And there you go. So it looks like it goes on nice and easy. As you see, I'm struggling. It goes on nice and easy as I'm struggling. So <laughs> it's not hard, but uh, sometimes when you try and pop in both feet, uh, you can see you're going to have a little bit of a struggle there. Let's put the little claws on him. So you can see it, it, is, it is a little difficult to get the gun on him. It is going to take a little bit of time to adjust that just to get that going. Pop this on him right there. Look at that. So he does look really nice. I want to bring this down. Let's go on just a little bit further. So that looks extremely nice. Uh, really happy with how that comes out. So far, both the figures, the O-ring figure and the four-inch figure, have been wonderful. But now we have one more test that we actually won't get with the other trooper. So as you can see, well, maybe you can see, maybe you can tell. I'm starting to turn off the lights. But you can't see is the mess that I created. So you can hear it moving around, right? So I'm gonna take her a little bit of time here. Again, wonderful UV light that I have discussed, and I will even put a link to it in the description if you are wondering, if you're looking to get one. It's $10 on Amazon, uh, rechargeable, which makes this thing awesome. So, we turn the lights off, and as you can see, everything is out. And then you just hit this just a little bit. And look at how he glows. Now the sword in the background is <laughs> to the O-ring figure. But this is how quickly this thing actually charges everything up. I absolutely love this thing. But look at that. Looks absolutely beautiful. He does illuminate up, which is actually pretty cool. Like you can actually see uh, on his legs and everything. So I don't think people realize that this thing was glow in the dark. But there you have it. Uh, it is a glow-in-the-dark uh, partial figure. Now, this is for the alternate head if you want it. And what is nice, when you hit it, you can't see the ball peg on the on the top. So, there you go. That is your uh, Gary Goggles right there. Uh, I think this thing looks sharp. Now, unless you have a glow-in-the-dark uh glow-in-the-dark shelf or you're really into glow-in-the-dark i'm not sure if you're going to you know keep that head on there because this head here for a four inch figure does look really nice and yeah i got dark and i think i put all the lights on but now the other thing that i did want to check really quick let me turn another light on here as we can see once you lose all that light it's like oh boy what are we doing here Bear with me. Again, this is how I like to do my reviews if you're new to the channel. But I don't do a lot of glow in the dark like this. <laughs> but having this UV, you can just charge it really quick, but turning the lights off isn't the easiest thing. Unless you stop the camera. Um, I want to check the backpacks. So here's an O-ring figure. Or not an O-ring figure. The modern figure. And you can see it actually does peg in there perfectly, perfectly fine. Let's say we want to create a new jump pack for Stalker. And look at that. Fits nice. It actually looks pretty good. This is a nice looking jump pack. Um, yeah, these guys should get with Hasbro and create some of these. So there you go. That is our Gray Wolf Gary Goggles figure again. Looks absolutely amazing. Super happy with how this turned out and really worth the price in my personal opinion. All right, so my final first reaction to this Gary Goggles Gray Wolf Skeletron figure is I think it's awesome. 
and I have to make a note change, is that the gun does fit act actually perfect in his hand. I wasn't paying attention, and I had it set down a little bit, a little wrong. It actually fits in perfectly the way it's supposed to. You just have to angle it properly. But the glow-in-the-dark, I'm a big fan of glow-in-the-dark. The extra head, um, the claws, the backpatch, I can put it with the other or the other four-inch Joes, the last uh, iteration of them. He fits in the his tank. It hits all those vibes if you want to combine these types of figure. And he looks futuristic enough, but not too futuristic to fit with your G.I. Joe. So, Skeletron.com, and I'll post a link in the description so you know where to go if you want to pick one of these up. All right, so there you go. If you're wondering if you want to pick up these, if you're into the 4-inch figures, 118 figures, do I think these things are worth it? Yes, they're $27. I know some people will complain, but hey, you know what? This is not the 80s anymore, and I'm sick and tired of hearing people whine and cry that I used to buy figures like that for $3. Guess what? You can't do that anymore, so shut up. I don't know why I went on the rant. If you're new to the channel, you're going, oh, God, this guy's an a-hole. If you've been here before, you're like, yep, yeah, that's par for the course. Anyway. Uh, it's awesome. You can make him a specific character. He could be your army leader with the actual head, or he can just be an army builder. And he can fit in with all your Cobras, or you can have a separate faction altogether. And when the Robo Skull comes, oh, when the Robo Skull comes, I can't wait. I'm going to be super excited. So there you go. Awesome looking figure. Uh, yeah, what else can I say? But what I am going to do, I'm going to get out of here. Listen. Uh, if you're on social media, it's a punk with underscore toys on Instagram, punks with toys, the Facebook group page, uh, good page, small community, no drama, and that's all that really matters in this community. Uh, and last but not least, you've stayed this long, so please take a second, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I drop some sort of Skeletron figure. Now, I'm going to get out of here, but before I do... Up here is going to be the O-ring version, and then down here is going to be the playlist of the two figures that I've done. But eventually, there will be more. Take care.